So uh, I'm going to introduce Ruby uh, to speak to us first. Let me just get my notes and my glasses. Ruby attended Herschel from 2008 to 2015. She's currently studying a Bachelor of Social Science at UCT in Economics, Business French, and Economic History. She plans on doing a postgraduate law degree next year. She's not quite sure where her career path lies, but she says she certainly wants to assist in, in uh, making a difference to people's lives. Uh, she enjoys learning, talking, and travel, and uh, please give Ruby a warm pink welcome back. I must say that I've always heard those introductions and I always felt um, that I would never get one myself. So I feel like <laughs> I've got a false sense of authority right now, <laughs> which I don't know if I should have. But I matriculated from Herschel in 2015. I attended Herschel from grade five. So I was inside these white walls for a large portion of my life. I'm grateful for the incredible education I received at Herschel. I think it instilled in me a sense that as a girl, I am no less capable than anyone else. And I think that it also emphasized that doing well and being involved is something that one should strive for. I appreciate the friends that I made and the teachers that I had and yearn for a time when my teachers knew me by name and pushed me to do the best that I could because that's something you certainly don't get at university. 2015, my matric year, was a momentous year in the history of education in South Africa. 2015 was the year of the first UCT shutdown and the explosion of the Roads Must Fall campaign and the decolonized education movement. I remember being a member of the debating society, and this was the single most popular topic of conversation. However, outside, sorry, this was in 2015 when I was still at Herschel, um, outside of these Friday afternoon discussions, I don't remember this being um, discussed much at school. So three years later, now a student at UCT, I'm quite shocked that this was not a bigger debate, considering what a large part it plays in my current education. I think that this speaks to a larger issue of a lack of engagement with political and social issues beyond the curriculum. Many people do not have opinions or knowledge of these subjects beyond what is portrayed in the media, where students are often vilified and the most memorable pieces of information are those in which an item has been defaced or feces has been thrown. School offers a perfect safe space to engage with things like this and form opinions when you are not being directly affected by shutdowns where there is an emo added emotional stress involved. Looking back, I can think of many ways that Herschel could have been more inclusive and engaged in this, this political discourse. I think that the nature of Herschel being a single sex private school in an affluent suburb with extremely high fees means that a large proportion of students are from middle to upper class families and have experienced similar upbringings. The issue with this is that firstly, there's minimal diversity, and secondly, the way in which the norms are constructed largely evolve, um, revolve around this expectation that people have the same or similar resources. These involve simple assumptions, such as everyone having access to a printer, or everyone being able to afford to go for lunch at Cavendish after school, or norms such as beige, beige tights being called flesh-colored tights, something that my sister reminded me about, because this certainly infers that there's only one color flesh. I think that this was definitely compounded by subjects such as race being regarded as taboo, and so there was no open dialogue. Naturally, because race is a sensitive subject, it is hard to discuss, and harder to do so in a way that does not ostracize those with opposing views, or those who are directly affected by it. However, what is more concerning is the idea that if, n if no one talks about race or other such issues, they can go unnoticed. Additionally, the idea of religious transformation should be considered. I think the only time I felt like an outsider at Herschel was during the first chapel visit, when the chaplain asked everyone to put their hands up um, if they belong to a certain religion um, other than Christianity. When he said Jewish, my hand went up, and when I realized that I was the only one with my hand up and everyone was looking at me, I progressively turned bright red. Obviously, that is an anecdotal story, but I think the issue of what does a contemporary Christian school look like is important, and also how to ensure that no one feels excluded due to their religion. 
I'm not sure if it is because I'm Jewish, but I truly believe that Herschel has changed over the years to become first and foremost an academic institution. So we must question whether these are, there are changes that can be made to make Herschel more of an inclusive environment so that everyone can have the ability to profit from the academic excellence that Herschel offers, no matter what religion they are. In hindsight, I think that schools should have tried to prepare us more for the real world by discussing these issues and being open to them. I think that the danger of not having discussions about things like transformation or race or decolonization or religion or even gender equality is that those who are adversely affected by them are ultimately the ones who suffer the most. I think that the only way to constructively engage in these topics of conversation is to try and get rid of the pretense that everyone from Herschel is the same. Additionally, to acknowledge that a lot of people at Herschel are hyper-privileged, and that is by no means the norm, especially in South Africa. Evenings like this are a great start to opening an, the conversation and getting everyone to understand what is truly meant by transformation or decolonization in a way that goes beyond what is portrayed in the media. The new transformation portfolio in the high school leadership shows that things are slowly starting to change because students have realized that they too can have a voice. I must acknowledge at this point that I understand the need for transformation from an outsider's perspective because I've never felt firsthand the legacy of um, apartheid or racial oppression. I would like to think that I'm aware of this issue, but I also need to remember to check my privilege. Thus, my advice to parents is to try and help your daughters understand the current socio-political climate. Be empathetic towards people and understand that everyone has different lived experiences. Furthermore, it is important that at an academic institution, um, as an academic institution, Herschel and all those involved in it should try to keep up to date with what is happening in South Africa. I think that ignorance breeds apathy. So encourage your daughters to research, to form opinions, and understand that although equality is written into our constitution, the issue is more nuanced than a legal one. And so I would say that we all have a lot of work to do before true substantive equality can be realized. Thank you.